Jesus presents forgiveness and repentance concepts. Filmed on the 15th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. This is part one. That many of your addictions are the direct result of your refusal to forgive or repent. In fact, almost every one of your addictions are the direct result of your refusal to forgive or repent. So that, that's a very important thing that we're going to discuss with you. So what I'm going to do now is get Fab to just go to the next slide and let's just go through the first things. Uh, yeah, you just need to skip through a few pages actually. Um, yeah. So we've revised a lot of this stuff already. So let's get... Yep. Here we go. So this is the first thing I would like to say to you both, to all of you. This is two points here. Almost all of your own and the world's suffering comes from two things. It comes from your refusal to forgive or it comes from the refusal to repent. You see, if you had forgiven, then you wouldn't have taken actions probably anymore that were based upon the things you've forgiven. So, for example, if your parents treated you badly and you felt really low worth and then you decided that you were going to try to feel superior, so what you did is you treated your children in a manner that made them feel like they are superior, right? That then caused damage to the world. They then think they're superior to other people in the world. So what, what, what happened if you had actually, re, if you had forgiven your parents for, feeling, for them feeling superior to you, what would have happened? You would have felt that you're just as equal to anybody else in the world as, as, as anybody else. And so you wouldn't have taught your children that they are superior. You would have taught your children that they are equal. So then there would have been no damage. Every little bit of pain and suffering that you experience right now comes from these two particular problems, the refusal to repent and the refusal to forgive. That's how important it is. Every facade you've created comes from the refusal to repent and the refusal to forgive. Every, every single um, addiction you have right now comes from the refusal to repent and the refusal to forgive. So once I realised this in the first century, what do you think I did? Thanks, Eloisa. I reckon you gave it a go. Yeah, that's exactly right. I said, I don't really have to worry about anything else. All I need to do is learn how to forgive and learn how to repent. That's all I have to do. And if I learn those two things the best possible way that I can, I'll get close to God more rapidly than any other way. But to do that, you have to give up your facade and you have to give up your addictions and you have to do all these other things, right? That's the issue. But I realise that this needs to become, needed to become my focus. So what that meant was that I decided to focus on forgiveness and repentance in my personal development. Does that make sense to everyone? And you can make the same choice. Remember, on, on Saturday, Mary said to you, are you going to make the choice to love or not? Right? How are you using your will? You, you can use your will to make this choice, to make the choice to become more loving. And where, how do you become more loving? You just, instead of refusing to repent and forgive, you choose to repent and forgive. That's how you become more loving. And there's a process involved, which we want to talk to you about, of course. When I say a process, there's emotions that are going to be involved because this is all soul-based work. It's not something you're going to be able to go, oh, I forgive you, oh, I forgive you, oh, I forgive you. And it's all done. It's not like that at all because it's based on what is the reality of your feeling inside of your soul. Do you feel like forgiving them? No. <laughs> Do you feel angry at them? Yes. 
So that's not forgiving them, right? You need to go through these feelings into the hurt and actually go through a lot of emotions in order to forgive or repent. But it is the most rapid way of processing through your unhealed self, your hurt self. It's the most rapid way to let go of all of your addictions. Because all of your addictions have been created to avoid doing these two things. Right? These two things are related to your hurt self. And whenever you choose to avoid doing them, you're going to be in your facade self, you're going to be in your addictions. A lot of your addictions will automatically disappear when you do this. That's hopeful, isn't it? Because you were freaked out about having to go through every one of them one by one, weren't you? Yeah, you were. Uh, and you were freaked out about having to deconstruct that facade in the manner that I was talking to you about, which you're going to have to do, but this is the, if you could think of it, it's the fast way to get into a lot of these things. Now, the only problem with it is, though, you can't repent for something that you have to forgive and you can't forgive something that you have to repent for. And also, you can't do it in your head. So you can't do this intellectually. It's impossible, in fact. And in addition to that, the problem with it all is, is that if we don't do these things, we're going to have the law of compensation acting upon us all the time to try to help us get to do these things. So repentance and forgiveness is a major part of the way to God. It is, in fact, a large part of the way. Do, do you understand why? Because the law of compensation is the other way. Now, do you know the difference between the two laws? The law of compensation is basically saying this. You do something wrong. You resist all the reasons why you did it. You don't, you, know, you don't even try to think about it. You're in denial about it. And the law, compensation, is going to place some damage in your soul and then it's going to act upon that damage in the soul with pain and suffering inside of your soul and it's going to keep doing that until you admit you did something wrong. In fact, what it's going to do is it's going to keep doing that until you engage the higher law, which is repentance. So it will act upon your soul, triggering you every single moment of every single day Try, just prodding, 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 and prodding, and prodding more. Prodding. Prodding. And still prodding, right? Waiting for you to come to the realisation that you have actually done something wrong and you can repent for it. Now, the law of compensation also acts upon your refusal to forgive. Because when you refuse to forgive, you're angry, you're resentful, you do all, a whole heap of things to damage other people because you're refusing to forgive a group of people. We'll go through this in a minute. And so what happens? The law of compensation is prod, 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 prod again with regard to why aren't you forgiving this person? Why aren't you forgiving this person? Why aren't you forgiving this person? And your refusal to forgive means that pain and suffering is going to be in your soul until you forgive. Now, if that's 100 years, it's 100 years. If it's 1,000 years, it's 1,000 years. There's people 2,000, 5,000 years still haven't forgiven. It's kind of a law of compensation, causing pain in the soul until such a time as a person comes to realise that they've actually done the wrong thing by not forgiving. See, most of you feel justified in not forgiving, if you think about it. All the people have harmed you, you go... Yeah, they harmed me. <laughs> you know, there's this anger and resentment inside and there's a refusal to forgive them. And that forgiveness is not just a simple, oh, I forgive you. I'm so magnanimous or whatever the word is. <laughs> Aren't I so wonderful? I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you. It's not a fiction, a facade. It's an actual state you're going to have to go into emotionally where you have no animosity towards that person at all inside of your heart where you have no feelings of 
wanting to harm them or hurt them and no feelings of resentment. All of those feelings have all gone because you've gone through this process of forgiveness. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the suffering, not only your personal suffering, or like your physical suffering, your body, what's happening to your body, the fact that you grow old and die, all of these things are all caused by two, these two causes, actually. Your refusal to forgive and your refusal to repent. And none of you understand that yet. But there will be a time when you start engaging these laws and you see an improvement, in, a rapid improvement in yourself, and then you'll start realising, ah, this is one of the secrets about God's way. This is one of the secrets about engaging God's path. Instead of just hammering away at the law of compensation every day, or you could say more truthfully, the law of compensation hammering away at you all day, you have a choice, and if you loved, you would make this choice to actually go through these processes instead. Even if you loved yourself, you would make that choice, let alone if you loved anyone else. Because it's an easier road and also far more sincere and truthful than the other road. So of course you'd make the choice. But most of us don't make that choice. See you. And when we do choose to forgive or repent, does that help to say we choose to forgive? Does that help the person also their soul that we're forgiving? It can. Yep. And the because, same with repentance. Because before the time we forgive, we're judging. And what is judgment? When you feel judged, what, do, you, do you feel like dealing with any emotion when you're judged? You don't, do no, you? No. Like, when you're judged, you just go, oh, you know, you feel, like, you feel like fighting the judgment, don't you? You don't feel like actually dealing with the emotion underneath the hurt. And this is a problem is, you see, when we, when we refuse to forgive, we've got all this judgment coming out of us, all this resistance coming out of us, and as a result of all this stuff coming out of us, what's, go what's going into the other person is all this judgment and resistance and everything. And, of course, that's making it more difficult for them to even admit that they did something wrong, right? In other words, it makes it more difficult for them to repent. So when we refuse to forgive someone, it makes it more difficult for them to repent. It doesn't mean that we're responsible, though, for their lack of repentance. God doesn't make you responsible for the, for the fact that you haven't forgiven your parents, for example. Right? But it does have an effect on them. So when you do forgive them and it's sincere, they will feel it. And when they feel it, things change between you and them. Automatically starts changing. Initially, they might get really angry because that's one of the first responses generally of a person getting, coming closer to their emotions. But things in a relationship will change generally if you forgive somebody. It's not always the case, but it can be the case. Paul, if we just straight to Paul. Um, with our kids, is um, repentance pretty closely connected to feeling guilt? Um, no. Guilt is an emotion that is actually what I classify as a self it's absorbed narcissistic emotion because it prevents you from seeing the real damage that you've done. It's really a, a feeling sorry for yourself, guilt, a lot of the times. True, true repentance is an acknowledgement, and we, we will actually have to at some point in the future go through what repentance actually looks like. But, but first, you've got to see that it's an acknowledgement of the actual truth. And the actual truth is you're not hurt, they are. Right? You did the hurting. When you have to repent, you have to come to acknowledge that you did the hurting. Now, that's not a self-absorbed place of feeling all guilty and self-focused and narcissistic. That's a place of seeing what you did to the other person. That's a place of reflecting upon the damage that was done to them, how they have now responded in their life because of what you did. That's a very different place than guilt. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, well, I wonder whether um, the emotions which I've been feeling towards my kids have been repentance or have they been, have they been more guilt? Yeah. Well, if you think about some of the emotions that you've had, um, certainly they've been more guilt-driven than repentance-driven. Does that make sense? Usually a person who's in guilt-driven finishes up doing even more damage to the child than less because they become very narcissistic and self-absorbed about the damage they did. In other words, they go, oh, isn't it terrible? And this is where you see parents often going to the child and saying, oh, I need you to forgive me for what I did to you. And if you don't forgive me, I don't know what I'll be able to do. What did you just do? What did you just do? You just made them responsible for the rest of your life. And that actually is another sin that you've just committed against them in your process of what you called repentance. That's not repentance. Right? True repentance is felt in your heart and doesn't have to engage the individual in any discussion. Right? True repentance comes from your soul. It doesn't come from your desire to have them forgive you. The reality is, is the amount of damage we've done to our children, they could forgive it, not forgive us for 100 years and we'd deserve it. Right? But I, what I'm telling you, talking to you about here, are, are the two, if you like, the fast way, which is the divine love way of going through your emotions. Right? What we've talked to you up until now, you're still going to have to engage because that's the natural love way of dealing with things that you don't get to this place with. You see, the whole reason why we've talked to you about all the other three days is because we wanted you to come to terms with the fact that you've done something wrong. <laughs> you've committed sins. You've done something out of harmony with love. We need you to see it. Because if you don't see it, you'll never get this way. Because the starting point of this way is to see what's been done and what you did. In truth, see what's been done and what you did. Does that make sense? You can't start to repent if you don't think anything was done to you and you can't, sorry, towards others from you, and you can't start to forgive if you don't think anything's been done to you. Right. Alan? The other part of the understanding that I had, which was the really exciting part, I think, was I looked at what, why is it a sin, what I've been doing with my addiction, and, and I, I was reading the prayer, and I saw the sacrifice uh, not having to, you know, sacrifice any of your creatures. And I realised the sin is that I have sacrificed everybody around me and in, 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 in the environment and stuff and feeding my addictions. So Correct. that that's that sacrifice. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So you then start to see what you've done. You yeah. See, there needs to be an awareness of what you've done. Yeah. And it yep. just gave me an incy, incy little bit of... Emotional, yeah, you know, of course, yeah. and then there also needs to be an awareness of what others really did to you. Now, I see many of you having a large trouble with that because when I start talking about what your parents did to you, you go, Oh, it wasn't that bad. No, I don't think it was like that. No, it wasn't that, you know, it didn't have that a large effect on me. If you could see what happened to your soul as a picture while it was happening, you wouldn't say any of those things, right. But most of us go, oh, it's not that bad. And why do we go like that? Because we've been taught to go like that because of the, the addictions or the facade of our parents entered us while we were still young. And so we, we grew up becoming, ha having the sa same opinions and the same concepts as our parents. So, so, we, so if they felt we deserved it, what do we go around saying as an adult? Yeah, I got belted a few times by my mum and dad, but I deserved it. But, but, if, but I, if I belted you right now, I'd be in jail for assault, <laughs> even if you deserved it. Right? Can you see what we do? It's okay for the kid to get belted around a bit because he deserved it, but for the adult to get belted around a bit, he got to go to jail. The person who did it's got to go to jail even if the person deserved it, so-called. So our concept is very, very flawed, yeah? Um, would you need to um, 
repent and also forgive for every single... If you just hold a bit closer for everybody here. Would you need to repent and forgive for every single act that you've perpetrated or has been perpetrated towards you? Yes. Every single act? Yes. Okay. All right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Thanks. Thanks. Clear enough? Stephen. So I was just wondering, I feel quite soft towards my parents, but I know I've got a lot of stored up rage towards them. So would that softness be my facade? Yes. It's a facade they helped you create. Yes. Lena, thanks. And if I feel guilty and pressured to repent towards my parents how do I shift into feeling that I actually have to forgive? Correct. These are good questions, aren't they? So, so, most, most of feel so, much, so a lot of children feel so much guilt towards their parents that they think they've got to, that their parents have got to forgive them, the child. And obviously that's not right because we've just drawn what the patterns are, where the damage came from, and we can see if we trace the damage back to its source, we can see that the persons who have all the red stuff where the source of all the red stuff is, that's the persons who are going to have to be forgiven from, by us. And we can see that if they are demanding that we repent, when actually they need to be forgiven by us, then we can see we've got an issue here that we've got to resolve. Yeah? So these are all good questions. So let's go through some of them, shall we? And so let's, let's have a look. Forgiveness relationships, let's first summarise them. So what's the definition of a forgiveness relationship? Now, I'm going to go through this pretty fast because I've already presented a lot of this on the board. A relationship with another person who caused our pain from God's perspective by being unloving to us during our childhood or any time in our later life. And by the way, this is unloving to us from God's perspective. You know what happens at the moment? Many of you think someone's being unloving towards you when all it is is they're not meeting your addiction. Right? Now that, from God's perspective, is love, not unlove, not a lack of love. Right? So this is from God's perspective, not from yours, and this is where it, where it becomes difficult because most of us don't have God's perspective. We only have our own. So let's go next. A relationship with another person who suppressed our pain from God's perspective. By being unloving to us during our childhood or any time during later life. So the first point was about the creation of the pain. And the second point is about the attempted suppression of the pain. Now, if you think about it, most parents do both of those things. They first create the pain. And then when the child starts to act out the pain that it feels inside of itself, the parents are not happy with that. And what do they do then? They take action to suppress the acting out of that pain. And that then causes additional damage to our soul that we're going to have to forgive our parents for. Does that make sense? It's Teresa? What about in the case of, as an adult, someone suppresses you? You, you have to forgive them as well, even though you, you've got some culpability well, this is, in there? We'll get to that. But if I can just make a general comment. Who attracted that adult into that person's life? Yeah, I did. I did, yeah. Right? So let's say in your case, who attracted your husband into your life? I did. You did? Yes. So anything your husband now does is partially your fault because you attracted him into your life. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. So can you really say, like, if you should forgive anybody, you need to forgive yourself for attracting him into your life rather than thinking that that you have to forgive him for the treatment because his treatment is actually an attraction that you've attracted in order to address some of these healed emotions that you're not addressing. You see, if you had forgiven your parents by the time you were five, would you have attracted a man who does the things that he does to you no. Would you have attracted him? No, you wouldn't no. have. You were, might have even known he was your soulmate, but you still would have gone, well, I'm just going to interact with you, love you, until the time you've dealt with all those things, then I'll have a relationship with you or whatever. Right? Wouldn't you? Yeah. So can you see our culpability in, in the relationship? See, most of us don't see that. You know what we do instead? 
we go, that person was a terrible relationship. I go and get another relationship and, I, and you feel resentful and angry towards that person, un, not understanding that that person was a person you attracted. Not understanding that you attracted them to deal with some soul-based damage that you had refused, refused to that point to deal with. Otherwise, you wouldn't have attracted them. So any damage you've attracted is something that you Since still... Since your childhood? Yeah, yeah. Is? Is something that you still need to repent for. Any if, damage you've attracted in relationships... Yeah, because you've attracted that... ...is more that likely going to be something you're going to have to repent for than something you're going to have to yeah. forgive of somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Any damage you've attracted in your adult life from other events, right could have been caused by the choices of those people. So that's, that's a different issue. So I'm talking about now your relationship specifically, right? And what I'm drawing is some analogies here so that to help you see that for the majority of us, we're refusing to forgive and we're refusing to repent for things that we did wrong. We're refusing to forgive others for what they did wrong and we don't even know the difference half the time. That's part of our problem. We're trying to forgive people who, who we need to repent with. We're trying to repent with people, our parents generally, who we need to forgive. And that's, of course, not going to be real. It can't work that way. Right? Now, bear in mind, as with everything that I'm talking about, God assesses all of these things individually. So some people do do damage to their parents. Like, for example, a person that gets so enraged with their parents and refuses to forgive their parents might finish up murdering their parents. Well, that certainly is damage to the parents, which the, that person will have to repent for. Does that make sense? But what I'm trying to draw here is some basic analogies for you to see where most of the work has to happen for the average person on the planet. Yep, Cara? If you get enraged at your parents but you don't murder them, is that the same thing? Well, if you feel so much rage that you feel like murdering, it's almost the same thing, yes, from God's perspective. Is there a, is there a line somewhere? Of course, when you actually murder them, then you've, actually, you've done even more damage and, of course, it's escalated damage. But, but remember, I said in the first century that even a man who looks at a woman as so as wanting a relationship with her commits adultery in his heart. Yeah. So so okay. where so where is the line? Well, my confusion is really like Karen, where is the line? There is no line. It's right. a sliding scale of intensifying reasons, isn't it? If so you say that's hundred percent. Right, and this is zero. Right, what's the worst possible thing you can imagine? Yeah, murdering them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, that's not the worst thing I could imagine. That's not the worst thing that's ever happened. What's the worst thing somebody could do to you? Do you think? If they just come along and shot you in the head. And then compare that with what other things they could do. And you'll start to get what I'm meaning. So, Kerry, if you just mic back. A slow torture? Yes, if you had a very slow torture over years, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Where yeah. they just kept you alive over years and years and years and years and they sexually and physically and violently tortured you over years and years and years, that would be... Like that, that would be right up here at 100%, wouldn't it, of, of harm yeah. going on for years and years and years. Whereas a murder might be right down here in comparison to that. And then having hatred towards the person might be here, right? And then just having a dislike of the person might be here. And then, do you see what I'm saying? It's a sliding scale of different things. And God knows the exact point where you are on every issue, every issue. What about if you, in the past, wished somebody would die quickly? Well, that's, if, if this is murder, then wishing when someone would die very quickly is very close to that, isn't it? 
in terms of the sin. Yep. Okay. So God knows where all of these places are. Once you connect to repentance and forgiveness, God will show you where you are on every one of these subjects. Thank you. I'm just thinking of um, most of my life I've been in denial of the anger I have at my mother and now I'm start becoming aware of the anger I have at my mother. Yeah. Um, and childhood anger is okay, but I don't think this is childhood anger. Well, can we get to discussing the details of individual things? Like one of the things when I start raising these issues is like I'm angry with my mother. Well, anger is the first step of forgiveness of your mother. Denial of anger is, a, is you're in no steps towards forgiveness of your mother. And then anger is the first step of forgiveness towards your mother. Does that make sense? That's the first emotion that you'll probably have to go through to forgive your mother. It's not the only one because you can go through, you can have rage and rage and rage and rage and you can choose to project that rage or you can choose to feel it. So if you chose to feel it and you process through the rage, what would come up after that might be some other emotions towards your mother. Like, oh, I don't understand why she did it. I don't understand why she did it. So you might go through that emotion. Does that make sense? So, but, but many of these emotions are going to be involved in the process of forgiving your mother. Yep. So anger towards your mother in the process of forgiveness, if it's truly felt by you alone, is much better than denial of the anger of your mother. Does that make sense? So if you look at reversing a problem, if this is you'd like to murder her, right? resentment, rage, hatred, all those kind of things, and, and we start sliding down, when you're just angry with her now, that's here. Does that make sense? But even murdering her, the feeling of murdering her, you wouldn't act upon it, but the feeling of it's there, you need to feel it, release it. Once you release it, you'll realise why. You get that? You'll realise why it's happening. Yep. And then as you feel that, you might feel afraid of your mother. You might feel the feeling of, why did she do it to me? Why did she hurt me? Why? You know, and as you're feeling all of these feelings, eventually you'll get down to the fact that you've got no more negative emotion about your mother. And then you've forgiven her. Does that make sense? So it's going to be an emotional process. If you can't cope with being emotionally overwhelmed, you're not even going to do anything about this. Forgiveness, repentance, pff, you're not going to be able to do any of it if you can't allow yourself to be overwhelmed emotionally. So that's why I've talked to you about being overwhelmed emotionally so much, right? Yeah. And if you can't be honest with yourself, do you think you ever do this? <laughs> Got, got Buckley's are doing this if you can, can't be honest with yourself. And if you can't be honest about other people, are you ever going to do this? <laughs> you're never going to forgive anybody if you can't be honest about what they've done. And you're never going to repent towards anybody unless you can honestly see what you've done to them. So truth is a big part of this, right? Let's keep going. A relationship with oneself where we purposefully or unknowingly chose to punish ourselves at the emotional request of others because of the pain or perceived pain others claim do we cause them. So this is a forgiveness relationship still, a relationship where we, with ourselves, so we need to forgive ourselves for taking actions where other people induced us to take that action because we, and we believed them. And so we did what they said. And that caused harm to ourselves. We need to forgive ourselves for that. Okay. All these kinds of relationships usually begin before seven years old in our childhood. Right. These are the kind of things that were done to us. Now, I can feel that you guys need a bit of a break to go to the toilet and stuff like that. And we've got a lot more to talk about. So let's just finish it there for five or ten minutes, shall we? have a bit of a break, and then we'll get on to discussing things more. <laughs>